the biggest influences for me um, for Apollo and 20XX from a writing standpoint have been pretty consistent. Um, I've added some new things, you know, to the the inspiration pool over the years, but the initial ideas kind of came from reading uh, Frank Herbert's Dune, uh, some C.S. Lewis, some Carl Jung, and the Bible, particularly the uh, apocalyptic um, revelation type stuff. So I remember thinking about all this a lot and 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 looking especially at recent history but even more than recent history almost all of history has this common thread and it is man trying to be god whether you're religious or not i mean that's that's the undeniable thread everything going back from you know babylon to rome to uh you know, Nazi Germany or Soviet, the Soviet Union, you know, or Mao's China, you see individuals or groups trying to set themselves up as the unquestionable power, you know, and, and technology hasn't always been there, but as technology advance, advances, these trends, and as we go in history, these trends seem to be happening quicker and quicker. And it's terrifying. And, you know, you look at Revelation in particular, and you see this this blueprint for the system, you know, this all-encompassing idea, this, this, this person or system that has to have everything be a part of it. And if something won't be a part of it, it kills it. It destroys it. It has to be perfect, or it's just trying to be perfect, you know. And it has to influence everybody, everything, everywhere at all times, you know. Like kind of like was it the uh, the image of the the I'm going to draw it like the or Ouroboro, the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail. You know it has to it has to be complete. It has to be perfect. And if it can't be, then it devours itself or devours something else. You know. But anyway, those have always been consistent ideas, and I I, I found myself kind of let down by literature and stories that didn't explore that. Like, there were so many things that people would praise or people would see that, that that didn't explore that or didn't explore it the way I thought it should be or as in great depth as it should be. And I really wanted to, to try to capture that idea of a total encompassing system and how you would deal with it, how it would come to be and how you would fight against it. Of course, we threw in some sci-fi and anime and you know unbelievable non-historical stuff into it of course i mean some stuff that's also in there is evangelion um or evangelion however you want to pronounce it f just strictly for the the aesthetic and emotions of it because that that series is about 90 percent aesthetic and 10 percent story and it pulls it off amazingly you know he, that guy i forget his name i'm sorry but the creator and the team that they tell so much with just images, you know, and of course that's kind of the backbone of animation, but they did it so well. They would just, sometimes it would just be a static, you know, screen or just a word, a, a, a white word on a black background. And it would make you feel so much and it would convey so much and so many ideas um, instantly. So we, we kind of wanted to take that, ideas well Josh and I we have a lot of the same influences but speaking strictly from a a writing standpoint I am still inspired consistently by apocalyptic literature regardless of the religion or source of it and uh, another big one is conspiracy theories I love I love I'm a sucker for conspiracy theories you know secret groups secret orders Illuminati um, Brotherhood of the Serpent all that kind of stuff you know early internet stuff that was just so ridiculous. Um, that's really interesting to me. Um, not that it's real, but that people think of that stuff or that, you know, there are hints or clues, but just this, the idea that there, there is that recurring theme throughout history of, of groups or people wanting power and absolute power and thinking that they deserve it, you know, and, and thinking that they're the guy, like they're the ones that are going to pull it through 
you know, C.S. Lewis and The Abolition of Man, which is a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, you should. Called people like this the planners. And he wasn't speaking in conspiracy theories. He was actually talking from a philosophical point of view of, of you know, this, this idea of people that think that human nature can be quantified and that humans and things that are so dynamic and so crazy as humans and human nature and, and uh, society can be broken down into building blocks and controlled or centralized, you know. And we see that. We see it in today's, you know, world. We see it happening all the time. There's always people, whether they be, you know, college students or, you know, 80-year-old politicians who think that they can, if, if the world just conformed to what they believed, everything would be perfect. We'd have heaven on earth. If and, and that's the that's the fault of, of every ideology and every religion, every philosophy, when it gets down to it, is it, it relies on if, oh, if everybody was like this, or everybody was like me, or everybody believed this, and everything would be fine. Well, yeah, you'd have automatons. You'd have, you know, you wouldn't have humans. You wouldn't have human nature at all. You know, you, you'd have, I forget, and I wish I could, I wish I could remember it. There's a, a wonderful poem I read in college, one of the only good things that came out of college, and it was about the, the contrasting of heaven and hell, and how hell, heaven was so dynamic, and things weren't, you know, what we would consider perfect, you know, they were lively, and brilliant, and, and kind of dangerous, you know, and it was a, it was a, a place where beauty and dynamism could thrive, whereas hell was a bureaucracy, <laughs> Hell was an assembly line. Everything was cut perfectly, and everything was a uh, quantified, and, and everything was efficient. And that's the that's a deadly word, efficiency. And we don't talk about that a lot as as being evil. And I'm not I'm not speaking from a business standpoint. You know, I'm, I'm speaking from how you treat other people. And another big influence, another big idea. That influenced not only Apollyon 20XX, but the entire Godfell universe, the entire foundation of the Godfell universe was the weaponization of intent. And what that idea that sup, suppose ideas and intent and, and what you wished could happen actually could happen. And how dangerous that would be because, you know, we know the adage that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And you can have people who believe that they're doing something good but in trying to make the world good they actually bring hell on earth and I, that came that idea kind of came from studying kind of the uh, the tantric stuff and I, I wish I could remember the proper words from but the you know that life is nothing but vibrations and that actually came from studying Buddha, Buddhism a little bit of Hinduism especially um the God that continuously dances and that's how life keeps flowing because everything is vibrations and everything is thoughts. I mean, a lot of this, you know, psychedelic type of ideas, I really like those. I really like those ideas, whether they're real or not, you know, or true or not, it's still wonderful ideas. And I felt like that was kind of an unexplored realm of thought because you know, it's not like the force. It's not this, this thing that exists. Like, no, the magic system in the Godfell universe is 100% reliant on human beings and that's what makes it so deadly and that's what makes it so dangerous because it's at the whim and behest of flawed creatures and that's the the greatest theme that brings me all the way to this the greatest theme running throughout apollyon 20xx and the entire godfo universe is that man cannot be god it's impossible if a human being has that kind of power it, it's it's hell. 